Hello, Sarah. How are you doing? Thank you so much for submitting your work here. Um, I'm just going through your writing here, and I just want to make a couple of comments here. Um, for some reason, I feel more confident about this assignment than I did with the banana. That, that's not unusual at all, Sarah. That's actually very uh, normal. And, and the reason I say that is because just without, and the reason I love teaching typography is because you get such immediate results. I mean, you're a better typographer than you were Monday of this week. And subsequently, you're going to be a better typographer next Monday than you are today. That is the beauty about typography. You get good fast. It's something that you kind of have to practice every day. So it's not like you get to a certain point in typography and then you're, you're at that level for life. You have to practice typography every single day of your design career in order to maintain um, a good, good, good type practice. So... Um, but the, 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 the cool thing though, is like you said, you feel more confident about this assignment. That's just because you've had just this little brief introduction to letter spacing. And now we're looking at word spacing. We've looked at serif typefaces and last week we looked at sans serif. So yes, yes, you are more confident because you're getting better. And again, that's why I love teaching typography. because I can literally watch students get very, very good right in front of my eyes and it's so rewarding as an instructor and, and it's equally as rewarding if not more so for students who are able to watch themselves build their skills at such high um you know such so rapidly and able to apply your typographic skills immediately to your design work which i said as i said it's going to make you a better designer tomorrow than you are today and that's very cool and exciting when you think about it okay let's go ahead and jump over to your fire and ice um, where did it go? Where did it go? Here it is, right here. Okay, so our I, I think it's a great start. Oh, where, I'm sorry, sir. I think it's a fantastic start. Really nice, nice job here. Craft is incredible. I'm so glad that you were able to get those baseline, mean line, and cap line in, in place because to a very high degree, they really, really show and illustrate um, um, optical relationships that are built into typefaces. As we can clearly see right here, how this descender for the vertical stem in the lowercase d, I'm sorry, this ascender on the serif for the vertical stem of the lowercase d rises above the cap line. And then also we can see a couple of other little areas. I'll, I'll point out in one second. But um, let me see if you had anything else that we wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, serifs, that's interesting. Most folks find, most design students find sans serif a little bit easier to kern. But that's cool. I get what you're saying. I totally get what you're saying, that the serifs are be able, able to be used as kind of guides. So that's pretty cool. Uh, by the way, uh, in type in um, uh, letter spacing in serif uh, uh, typeface for body copy, you don't want the serifs to touch, but it's okay in display for the serifs to touch. And that was touched upon in our uh, lecture for week two. So be sure to review that. Let's go ahead and jump right to work. All right, as I said, it's a good start. I've also got this document up here so we can make some comparisons. This is something that I have typeset and I consider this to be perfect letter spacing as well as perfect word spacing. Um, so let's just go and in a display setting, it being that this is a pretty large typeface. So um, and that's relevant because word spacing and letter spacing does change based on type size. That makes sense, right? Again, that was covered in our lecture. So you really, really want to pay attention. The larger your type is, you really want to get in there and pay very close attention to uh, letter spacing and word spacing. So fire and ice. Um, the first thing I'm seeing is, is you've got your baseline mean line cap lines down, right? But we're not really accommodating for overshoot. So we can see overshoot right here on the curved letters. Overshoot indicates that curved letters sit above, a little bit above the mean line, a little bit below uh, the baseline. And in certain specific cases, um, above the cap line on curved letter forms. And that is an optical relationship that accommodates for inconsistencies in perceived scale of um, different letter forms. So in other words, curved letter forms, if they're presented at, 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 to where they come right up to the base, to the um, baseline or uh, associated mean line, they're gonna look smaller than uh, other letter forms. So to accommodate for that optical illusion, we just create a little bit of overshoot, a little bit above the, and, and I'm going to zoom, I can zoom in here and you can definitely see, but right here, there's, see that cap line. If I hover over it, you can see the blue. See that uh, mean line right there? See how the curve sits right above it a little bit? See, it's the same thing here, here. And on the bottom, we also see the same thing. Again, that's called overshoot, and you want to accommodate for overshoot in your final submission for um, our fire and ice uh, uh, coming Sunday. 
Um, as far as your letter spacing goes, I think you're, 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 you're pretty good in some areas and other areas need a little bit of help. Um, the word fire, I think it's too wide. It's, it's the whole letter spacing here is too wide. I think that the space between the I and the R is okay, um, but the, the space between the F and the I, that's too loose. We want to tighten that up, and then we want to tighten that space up right there. The word and looks darn good. But I think that this can be tucked in just a touch. If not, actually, you know what? I take that back. Let's leave and alone. And is, is perfect. And the more I look at it, I'm really glad I did take a, a good close second look. But And this happens. The more you look, the, the more you see. So it's always a great idea to look at your kerning intent and, intent and your letter spacing intent. Look away. Keep yourself occupied for a little while and come back and see what the differences are. And this is exactly what just happened. At my first glance, I thought um, this could be closer. I look at it again, look at the area surrounding it, and I see now this is too close. So I think this can be opened up just a little bit right there through the N and the D. Ice is perfect, just perfect. I, I, if anything, I think this can the E can move in just a touch. But that's nice right there. So I think your letter spacing is fantastic. The word spacing, I think, is just a little bit wide, but it's very consistent. So the viewer is able to look at this phrase and see it as a phrase, and that's because of the consistent letter space, I'm sorry, word spacing. The idea here is to be able to look at this and see fire and ice and not have to see fire and ice or fire and ice and not to have to like sound things out or picture things out to get it. Right, and that to a very high degree points to success in uh, letter spacing and word spacing. So the mind can perceive groups as groups and not individual elements that comprise those groups. And I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know because that has a lot to do with readability in typography, the way that our eye perceives groups. Of course, the, the more groups we perceive, the less expeditious reading is gonna be, right? And again, that all points to letter spacing and word spacing. Um, okay, so the reason I say that is because right now I think that in this example it's easy to see that it, the viewer looks at this and immediately just sees fire and ice. No breaks here, no breaks there, no, no cadence breaks, just fire and ice, right? This, though we do see a group, it's more that we see fire and ice as opposed to fire and ice. And of course, that has to do with these spaces being a little bit too large. So we break those spaces just a little bit, bring those a little bit closer. And like magic, you're going to look at this. And by the way, save, save this one. And when you redo it with closer word spacing, look at the two and you'll clearly see this one. The propensity is to go, is for the viewer to, to sound this as fire and ice. Break those spaces down a little bit, and you'll see like magic, the viewers all, all of a sudden going to see fire and ice. It's a cool thing. All right, so those are my recommendations, and um, go ahead and, and let me know if you have any questions at all, but I'd like to see those changes made in your, uh, your final um, fire and ice do this Sunday. And again, if you have any questions between now and then, please just let me know. Thank you very much.